Lindsey Graham revealed the real reason the U.S. is so interested in Ukraine, it's because they're sitting on 10 to $12 trillion worth of critical minerals that we want to get our grubby little hands on. Here's Lindsey Graham being interviewed on ABC's Face the Nation. Let's watch. We turn now to Republican Senator Lindsey Graham of South Carolina. He joins us from London. Good morning to you, Senator. Thank you. I know you were at those D-Day remembrances earlier in the week, and yeah. uh, you met with President Zelensky as well. He has asked for more training for his yeah. forces and for that to happen faster and inside of Ukraine. Do you support the U.S. doing that? Uh, yes, I do support us training inside the country. Uh, you know, the delay in weapons uh, because of house inaction, we did lose momentum. But from the very beginning, the Biden administration, they did not impose pre-invasion sanctions to deter Putin. They didn't give weapons to Ukraine early on to deter Putin. And now we've got a chance to reset this war that they have the weapons. Here's what he wanted most of all, for us to go after the Russian assets all over the world, take the money from the sovereign wealth funds of Russia and give it to Ukraine. Mm -hmm. There's $300 billion uh, sitting in Europe from Russian sovereign wealth assets that we should seize and give to Ukraine. We have Russian money in America we should seize. We should make Russia a state sponsor of terrorism under U.S. law. When I suggested that to President Zelensky, he lit up like a Christmas tree. Uh -huh. Making Russia a state sponsor, of US, uh, state sponsor of terrorism under U.S. law would be a very big blow to Russia. Well, not only that, it would be a blow to the United States, by the way. It'd be a blow, it, again, just using these sanctions, using money as a weapon has not been favorable to the United States ultimately. We can get away with it now because we're the big bad bully, but the world is starting to see that. And they say, it's only a matter of time before I'm on the, the, you know, the crap list from the United States and they start coming after me. That's what countries are thinking. And so they see this, if they see that the United States could just seize assets and give them to another country, seize assets from one country and funnel them over to another country. Um, yeah, that, that doesn't really bode well for the United States position in the world as the global power that has a stable currency. It certainly will destabilize our currency very quickly when people no longer have confidence in it. What keeps our currency stable is the confidence people have in its stability, which it's like, it's like circular. It allows it to stay it allows it to stay um, stable. Let's keep watching. Uh, I, I don't know that the Biden administration would sign off on that, though. Um, but in terms of what you just mentioned, they with, won't. <laughs> with, with the assets, uh, President <laughs> Biden did say this morning uh, he had reached an agreement with President Macron of France on the use of profits from those frozen Russian assets to help Ukraine. I know the Europeans haven't wanted to go ahead and yeah. seize assets because it would hurt their banks. Yeah. Well, they, they want to use the interest to help you. Either we're going to help Ukraine or we're not. It's now time to give them the F-16s, let them fly the planes, long-range artillery to hit targets inside of Russia, go after Putin's assets wherever they're at all over the world, go on the offensive. I think this summer uh, uh, Ukraine will regain uh, military momentum. Everything we've done with Ukraine has been slow. It's been indecisive. Mm -hmm. But if we went after the assets that Putin has all over the world, take his money that's stolen from the Russian people and help the victims in Ukraine, I think it would do a lot to end this war. Your Republican colleague, uh, Senator Tommy Tuberville, just this past week said on Steve Bannon's show that Vladimir Zelensky is a dictator and unconstitutional. And he said this about Vladimir Putin. He doesn't want Ukraine. He doesn't want Europe. Hell, he, he's got enough land of his own. Uh, he just wants to make sure that he does not have United States weapons in Ukraine pointing at Moscow. Those echo some Russian talking points. Senator, I, I wonder if those remarks yeah, yeah, from your fellow so. senator represent the GOP. No, it represents him and him alone. If you spend 15 minutes studying Putin and what he wants, he wants to re uh, recreate the Russian Empire. He's not going to stop in Ukraine. We celebrated the 80th anniversary of D-Day. Uh, it was a failure. Uh, it was the unnecessary war uh, described by Winston Churchill. We had a dozen chances to stop Hitler. Uh, it's not about 
NATO is not about American weapons in Ukraine. It's about a megalomaniac wanting to create the Russian empire by force of arms. If you don't stop him, there goes Taiwan. Mm -hmm. So we've been slow as hell of helping Ukraine, but Senator Tuberville's analysis really misses what Putin's all about. He's an outlier, I think, in the Republican Party. I like him personally. But uh, what did Trump do to get the weapons flowing? He created a loan system. They're sitting on 10 to $12 trillion of critical minerals in, in Ukraine. They could be the richest country in all of Europe. I don't want to give that money and those assets to Putin to share with China. If we help Ukraine now, they can become the best business partner we ever dreamed of. That 10 to $12 trillion of critical mineral assets could be yeah. used by Ukraine and the West not given to Putin and China. This is a very big deal how Ukraine ends. Mm -hmm. Let's help them win a war we can't afford to lose. Let's find a solution to this war. But they're sitting on a gold mine to give Putin 10 or $12 trillion of critical minerals that yeah. he will share with uh, China is ridiculous. What do you think Putin thinks? I mean, do you think Putin thinks about those 10 to $12 trillion worth of critical minerals? Because my assumption is, if, if Lindsey Graham is thinking, we Americans have got to get our hands on that 10 to $12 trillion worth of critical minerals, my guess is Putin's thinking the same thing. That would be my guess. And also uh, with Ukraine being right on their border, Russia's thinking, well, we can't afford to have those critical resources and that amount of money go into the hands of the Americans with, we know how the Americans are. So the, the Russians thinking, well, or, or Lindsey Graham thinking, we don't want the Russians to get those 10 to, 20, 10 to $12 trillion of critical minerals because then they're going to share those resources with China. Uh, and, and, then, and then what? You know, what, what exactly, what would be the fear that, what kind of fear is he installing in us right there? He's trying to say, you know, it would end up, the, these two countries would become more powerful. They could wage war against us. China only has one base outside of China. That's in Djibouti. Uh, Russia has been fighting terrorists in the Middle East. And um, who's the bigger threat here? You know, if, if Putin is thinking the same way as Lindsey Graham and thinking, well, there's 10 to $12 trillion of assets and I don't want the other guys to get it, uh, it's, it's who, wants, who wants to prevent the other guy from getting it more is who wins this war. And I think that Russia would have a much larger reason to want to ensure that the United States doesn't get their hands on those resources to use as, you know, for actual warmongering. China has one base in the world. The United States has 800 or something bases all around the world. So it is more dangerous for the United States to have their hands on those assets than another country that doesn't warmonger around the world at this point. So, um, from a logical perspective, I mean, Lindsey Graham thinking that, what, he's the only guy who's thinking this way? My guess is others are too. And, uh, it, you know, it, they're also wanting to prevent the West from getting those resources, especially when Ukraine is right on Russia's border. But he really says the quiet part out loud, doesn't he? I mean, this isn't about democracy. This is about the money, honey. That's what this is about. And Lindsey Graham is making that really, really clear. If this were about democracy, which is how they sold this war, especially to the left, telling Democrats, well, we love democracy. We don't want brutal dictators in power, right? And we're all about democracy. And so um, we've got to help Ukraine because we don't want them to fall into the hands of a fascist dictator like Putin. No, we, we need to protect their democracy. Meanwhile, they have canceled elections and Zelensky is effectively forever in power in Ukraine because they're saying that they're not going to have any elections until the war is over, but then they're saying the war is never going to really end because the war is not over until Ukraine gains all of their territory back, which is not going to happen. So essentially, they've instilled a dictator, now a, um, a Zelensky, who's going to be in charge forever with no elections. They've gotten rid of democracy, and Lindsey Graham is now admitting it's actually about the 10, 12, 10 to $12 trillion in critical minerals. Unbelievable. And this should be a lesson. It should be a lesson for those times when we want to trust our leaders. You know, we want to believe them. We want to believe maybe this is the one war that's for a good cause. Many of us are very much against the wars that the United States has been waging, but we're not against all wars. Like, there's, there, there are moments when I believe war is probably justified. I haven't seen them in our 
history as of late for the United States over the last several decades. But I can imagine there are moments, you know, when we think about World War II and the Holocaust and rescuing the Jewish people from a massacre, I think many of us believe that there are some moments when it is absolutely necessary to go and and help. But they've just gaslit us decade after decade after decade saying this, we're doing this for a good reason. And they pull it at our heartstrings. They know how to get us emotional and they get us to go along. And then it turns out, you know, as we're going along that they don't stand for any of the reasons why they try to get us to go along. They're saying, oh, it's about democracy. We have to preserve democracy. And then they cancel elections. They say, oh, it's about democracy. It's totally about democracy. And then they say, well, actually it's about the 10 to $12 trillion in critical minerals. So I think, I hope that this is a somewhat of a wake up call to people. Uh, I mean, one can hope, it, 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 even if this turns the minds of just a few, it takes a few, it takes a few every day. And if we just get a few every day, then we get more and more people to open up their eyes to this, to this uh, gaslighting of the American people that the military industrial complex and its enablers have been doing to us for decade, you know, decade after decade after decade. And this is just another showcasing of this, the hypocrisy, the ridiculousness of all of this. Thank you for watching this clip from the full Kim Iverson show, which you can catch just by heading to that link down below, kimiversonshow.com. You can watch the full show from what you just watched, or you can catch the full show live Monday through Friday, live streams, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern at kimiversonshow.com. See you then. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Never miss an episode. Never miss a clip. Never miss a segment. Thanks, guys.